Hi everyone, we're going to be colouring these lovely little mushrooms. I absolutely love mushrooms. Now I've been having a look on my um, computer to look at pictures and I've decided to colour these as chestnut mushrooms. The reason for that is because they're quite dark on the top which gives us a little bit more interest with regards to what to how to colour them and what colour to do them. I'm not sure they would be completely chestnut they're probably not rounded enough but I just think it'll be a little bit more fun for us now for mushrooms warm browns I think we need I'm sorry warm greys and browns so I've decided to use my polychromos again because we've got a nice range of those sorts of colors so I'm going to start actually with the um the sort of gill area now that would be quite dark I think so I'm going to grab my warm grey six which is a very dark grey but brownish and uh, just gently start to fill this in i'm using the um, side of my pencil so that i get a lighter um, amount of um, color i don't want it to be too dark at this point i'm just having a think about what i'm going to do i'm going to sharpen um, it usually helps with these small, it's quite a small picture. Sorry, my page keeps flipping around. It's a little annoying, but hey-ho. So I'm going to put a bit darker up here because there would be more shadow. It's the um, This bit is overlapping the sort of gill area. So it's going to create shadow and there'll be a little less shadow towards the edge. So that's my plan. Hopefully it's you can see a little bit of a difference. I'm going to do the same on each one and this is just the way I would do it on a on a mushroom house toadstool house whatever as well but for the stems now they're very pale not quite ivory they're sort of very pale with a touch of brown so it's a little bit tricky to get that color quite right particularly with the polychromos but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the this brown here which is the nougat believe me and the ivory just have a little play I'm going to put the a little layer of ivory down first on the not too hard I'm not going to burnish it in or else I won't be able to add any brown but just a little bit as a base you can't really see it but it is there and then grab this one and really lightly go over it I want just the lightest touch just really light now sometimes when you buy mushrooms they've got clods of dirt and things on the very bottom of the um, stem you could include that if you are very imaginative creative etc not me I'm just going back over with the ivory with quite a few layers and now I'm just thinking that near this top part here it would be sorry just putting my hand across to grab my sharpener it would be a little bit more shaded a little bit more shadow so it would be a little bit darker I'm so sorry about my page and so I'm just going to add this why I've sharpened just a touch of extra color just here on the top to indicate a little bit of shadow it's just the tiniest touch and uh, hopefully it just gives that slight illusion now for the tops we're going to go darker brown um, some of them are quite pale some of them are a little darker um, looking at the photos I've got I'm going to use this um, color to do a base for them now at this point you can think about whether you want to give an illusion of um, that this, it's sort of th more three-dimensional rather than flat and to do that we need to apply more colour to this edge here and gently reduce towards the middle and the same from this side inwards and hopefully that will look more like it's rounded and we're going to do the same with the little one as well and hopefully that's helped a little bit I think that 
blend line is a bit too there that's better now with the chestnut mushrooms they're often got sort of little splodges of darker dirt color sort of splodges I don't know so I'm gonna grab a slightly darker pencil this is the 176 which is the Van Dyke brown now this is quite dark you need to be careful about how much you are using and think about sort of um, splodges you want to put I'm just going to dot around a little bit to make it look a little bit uneven because that's how they tend to be but I need to make sure we can still see the difference between these darker areas on the edges so I don't want to take it too dark just making it a bit splodgy in my technical term I don't want it to look spotty though so I don't want those splodges to all be the same size and I'm actually going to use it just to darken just this edge just a tad as well to uh, emphasize that um, shape a little bit more on each of them and I think we're probably done already it's quite a quick little one isn't it um, I could try and add mud to make it look a little bit more to give us a bit more time but I haven't got any pictures with mud and I'm not really very confident in doing that so I'm just going to leave it just as is. One thing you could add is a little bit of shadow underneath them if you want to make it look like they're not just floating in the air but are they lying down? Are they standing upright? I've no idea so I'm not going to worry about that I'm just going to leave them as they are so I'm just going to leave it as simple as that today just a, a pair of little mushrooms um I've just noticed a tiny white bit there there we go and there there I could fiddle around and faff for a while but I'm going to leave it now so uh, that's us done today so mushrooms I hope that was useful I hope you found it fun thank you very much for watching and happy colouring